Okay, every, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Prophetic Bible Study today. I'm Pastor Tyrone. I have Pastor Nike here, and we're going to um, go through Psalms 101. But before we start, let us pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I just thank you for this wonderful day, and thank you for bringing us all here today to just study your word. Lord, we just turn this Bible study over to you. We just ask you to anoint it and bless it and give us all the revelation. Just teach us today and guide us in, um, in your spirit and your truth today. And we just surrender it all to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Psalm 101. Promise faithfulness to the Lord. A song of David. Amen. Amen. Psalms 101 verse 1. It says, I will sing of mercy and justice. To you, O Lord, I will sing praises. In Psalm 59, verse 16, but I will sing of your power. Yes, I will sing aloud of your mercy in the morning, for you have been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Amen. 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 Well, when I was doing some research on this song, um, it talked about how David has just became king and that he was, you know, we know that he was a man after God's own heart, but he was just praising the Lord because we know he went through a lot. We he went through, you know, the wilderness. He went through living in a cave. He lived with Saul trying to kill him and, you know, battles here and there. And, and we know that, you know, through all of that, he still trusted in the Lord. And we know that now he's singing praises because all of that stuff is behind him. And now God is preparing him to be king. Amen. 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 Verse 2. I will behave wisely and blameless, perfect way. I will, be, yeah, I will behave wisely in a perfect way or blameless. But when you come to me, I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Amen. Amen. You know, when, we, when I was talk, reading about this, it was saying that, you know, David just wanted to do what was right in God's eyes. And as king, he, you know, he had a really big responsibility. Not only did he have to want to be blameless and perfect in God's ways, but he also wanted those people that were under him, the Israelites, to fall perfectly with him, you know, because, you know, we know that as kings, if the king is strong and the king is just, so is the kingdom. You know, we have a king, we have God, and we have Jesus. Jesus is the head of our, our, of our, of our church, and we are the body. So if we are following him, you know, which is why we do these things, because we don't want to be doing it all wrong. We want to, we want for us to just be pleasing in God's sight, you know. And David was a, gives an excellent example of all of those things. He was always wanting to please God. He didn't care about what man thought or what man said or what man did. You know, if it was right within the Lord, he was down with it. And so long as the Lord was the one that was guiding him, you know, he was fine, you know, and he's praying now because he's about to take on a really big responsibility of, of being the king of Israel. And he needs to have, you know, he needs to be wise. He needs to be blameless. He needs to be walking with an upright and perfect heart because, you know, the kingdom is this house. You know, we know that, um, Solomon had that same prayer when he became king. He prayed that he would that he would have wisdom and knowledge and understanding so he could judge the people wisely, so that he could be a good king and that he could be fair and honest. You know, David, he, he gets that from David. Amen. 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 Any comments? Okay. In 1 Kings 9, verses 3 to 7, And the Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your supplication that you have made before me. 
I have consecrated this house which you have built to put my name there forever, and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. Now, if you walk before me as your father David walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever. As I promised David your father, saying, You shall not fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. But if you or your sons at all turn or turn back from following me and do not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off or destroy Israel from the land which I have given them. And this house, which I have consecrated for my name, I will cast out of my sight. Israel will be a proverb and a byword among all peoples. Amen. 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 Hello, I, this is Sister Joanna. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. well um, I couldn't find the unmute button earlier to, to make a comment. Um, you know, I talked about um, in the first part, um, I'm, I might be looking at a different version of the psalm in verse 2. I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. Mm -hmm. um, and so what does it mean to walk with integrity? Um, you know, I have this wonderful um, psalmist book that was given to Rufus and I as a wedding gift as a, um, uh, from a special person. And uh, there's a little comment area um, and it's so beautiful. I just wanted to share it. And it says, to walk with God is to grow in personal integrity. More than this, it is to love integrity. The more one grows in Christ and journeys through this world in communion with him, the deeper one's desire to be an integrated human being will be. To bring into alignment our passions, our words, our thoughts, and our finances and so on, you know, all those things in our life. And that just struck me as being such a, um, just such a comment of, you know, what does it mean? It really means a lot to walk in integrity. And um, it, it's not an easy thing. And we can't, we can't do that without the Lord. Um, he has to teach us how to walk in integrity and how to love that virtue of integrity of how to love that virtue in and of itself and and want it to be a part of our characters so um well that's my comment and i wanted to just share that um with you uh you know that the issue of walking with integrity thank you sister joanna that was excellent very well very good thank you any other comments Pastor Tyrone and I, we were just looking up the Hebrew word for perfect in verse two, and where it says, um, walking, bef uh, walking perfect perfect before him. Heart, yeah. um, I had it and then now my phone is very slow, <laughs> but it actually, the, the Hebrew word um, did have integrity in it, mm -hmm. um, but my connection is, I had it on my phone. Oh, there it is. I will behave wisely in a perfect way. And then later on in verse two, it says, I will walk with a perfect heart. And perfect is Tom or Tom. Completeness, integrity, also part of the high priest's breastplate. Um, blameless, you know, Pastor Tyrone did say blameless. Um, but of course, you know, God has to do this work in us. Yes, you know. <laughs> we cannot just, just try to do it on our own strength no. um but i think it really is walking the ways of jesus walking amen. Uh, amen. in love amen. amen well we we have come to realize that we can do none of these things without jesus and once we come to that realization then it's a very easy walk because we don't try and be perfect on our own you know we don't try to we have integrity on our own and we don't try to love on our own. 
It's him who teaches us how to do those things. And when we surrender that fact that, you know, that was the problem with the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness. They thought they could do all these things on their own. And they said they could, but in fact, they really couldn't because they failed over and over and over again. And they went around the mountain over and over and over again. And they never made it to the place where God wanted them to go to because they kept trying to think that they could do it on their own. I think if they would have surrendered and said, we just give up, we give it to you, God, we can't do this without yourself, then they probably would have had a better outcome. And I'm just you know, thinking, reading about what we do and what the word tells us, it probably would because God tells us to surrender and, and give it to him and, and he will heal us, you know? So we see here that this verse is talking about Solomon when Solomon became king. And God spoke to Solomon twice. God told him, you know, because you asked this, I will give it to you. I will make you the wisest man in all the land. And he was. And he told Solomon these words, but if you forsake me, you know, you will be destroyed. I will cut off Israel, you know, but we know his heart was changed because of that, you know, power and women and, you know, he lost his integrity. We can truly say that Solomon in the end, he lost his integrity. You know, he was, he started out really good, but then, you know, wickedness comes in and changes us if we allow it to come. So, you know, we can't do it without the Lord, that's for sure. And, and we, David is a wonderful example of that because David shows us that he, you know, he loved the Lord. He, had, he was a man after God's own heart. That's, that's, that's for sure. And his attributes show that, you know, was he perfect? Absolutely not. He made his own mistakes. He, you know, in this walk, he did his own mistakes, as we do as well. But the wonderful thing about David is every time he made a mistake, he turned back to God. And that's all we have to do. Every time we mess up, just turn back to God. You know, God gives us our integrity and he will help us to walk mainly. And he will take away the things that are not in our, us little by little. And he gives us a perfect heart and a heart of flesh. Little by little, he takes those things out of us. You know, but well, actually, there's nobody. That's true. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any other comments? Amen. Yeah, so, Pastor, do, yes, do you, think, you think in the case of the uh, Israelites, especially in, in the wilderness, was that more, was that experience was a teaching for us? I think more, I mean, because they, they were under the law. Yeah. And they just felt that, it seems to me, they felt like the law was it. And of course they couldn't they they couldn't keep the law, but then we get we got to see their mistakes and the fact that they couldn't, so it's no need to think that we can. And then but Christ has come already, and we know Christ came to 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 solve that problem because he knew that they couldn't do it. Amen. But yet we have no excuse because we have we have uh their experience to look at. And to know what mistakes that they made, and 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 that we know, we we know for us it's all going to be based on faith, faith in Christ, and 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 we've learned that we have to ask God because God can do it, and 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 we we uh, and, and that's what we teach, that that we just trust God, and not not think that we can do it, and yes. When we grow up thinking that we we can, uh, because the world is saying, "Well, you got to do this and you got to do that, and you you got to believe, but you got to do more than believe. You have to have faith that He will get you where you need to go, uh, because you can't do it on your own." And and uh, and so we 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 have we have that benefit of 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 those the many failures of the Israelites in the wilderness and beyond and even even in those who like you mentioned david was a man after god's own heart but he still made mistakes also and um and and and, and solomon who god gave him wisdom 
and he did well, but he made a big mistake in with his wives and 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 you know uh allowing them to influence him and him uh uh being resulting in in worshiping the other gods their gods and what have you so those are my comments oh thank you pastor rufus excellent mm -hmm. that was an excellent comment and perfect i mean the bible is a training for all of us you know the whole book is training you know, it, it teaches us a lot of things. Um, like the Israelites, it teaches us that you're right. They were under the law. You know, Moses brought the law down. He gave it to them. They said, okay, we'll do it. You know, without even realizing that they couldn't do it without God. And, you know, and when we are the same way, like you said, we grow up, we grow up thinking that we need to take care of ourselves, get a job, get married, have children, you know, become rich and famous and, you know, all those things. And, and it's our destiny to, to do that because, you know, the world teaches us that that's what we need to do. We need to learn how to take care of ourselves, you know, and all of the trainings and things we go through in life is for us to be able to take care of ourselves. But, you know, it really does just come down to the Lord because the Lord will guide us. You know, as we come to learn later that if we surrender our life to Christ, the Lord will take care of what the addictions we have. God will take care of all the burdens we have. God will financially give us what we need and a home and food and shelter. Now, I remember when I was, before I was called, you know, I was praying all the time. I've always been in church my whole life. Since I was born, I was in church, you know? And so even when I didn't even have a church, when I moved to California, I was still praying and reading the word, even though I didn't have a church that I was attending. But I was always talking to God and I was always telling God, you know, I, you just need to help me and take care of me. You know, I just need, you know, all I want in life is to have food and to have a job and have a place to live. That's really all I needed, you know. And even back in those times, God provided those things for me, you know. And, and it was part of a bigger plan because here I sit today, you know, praising him and talking to him and, and worshiping him and, and helping others. Praise the Lord. You know, I didn't see all those things coming, but... You know, it was, it was just, it was God, all God. Amen. 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 Thank you for that. Amen. Those comments, yes. Any other comments? Okay. Verse three and four, it says, I will set nothing worthless or wicked before my eyes. I hate the words of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. A perverse heart shall depart from me, and I will not know wickedness. Amen. Amen. In Joshua 23, verses 6 to 8. Therefore, be very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses lest you turn aside from it to the right hand or to the left, and lest you go or associate with among these nations, these who remain among you. You shall not make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause anyone to swear by them. You shall not serve them nor bow down to them, but you shall, shall hold fast to the Lord your God as you have done to this day. Amen. 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 We shall hold fast to the Lord to this day. Amen. Amen. That is the answer. Holding fast to the Lord. Amen. There are so many things that cause us to, or might want us to go turn to the right or to the left. There are so many distractions. And, um, you know, I too was just recently heavily attacked with warfare um and it just distracting me and and discouraging me um but i just love how in joshua 23 verse 8 it says 
but you shall hold fast to the Lord your God as you have done to this day. Um, just holding fast to him despite everything that's going on or all these attacks that you have in your mind. Um, just hold fast to the Lord, just cling to him and, and just remember the promises that he has for you. Amen. And I was thinking about Pilgrim's Progress when, when Tristan, Kristen is walking down and the evangelist saying, go straight, stay on the path, stay on the straight and narrow path. Do not go to the left or to the right, but just go straight, you know. And his burdens were heavy. We know, we can, if you've seen the movie, he's carrying a heavy burden, you know. But then he gets to this place where worldly wisely comes, you know, and he's saying, no, you don't want to listen to the evangelist. You want to go to the left and go up to the Galilee. Hmm. And, and he will take away your burdens and everything's going to be fine, you know, and, and Christian follows it, you know, you know, how quickly we forget sometimes that all we need to do is to hold fast to the Lord. Yeah. That's, 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 you know, we can figure it out sometimes that, you know, God, maybe God can't do it, but no, God can do it all. And he does. So we need to realize that, you know, going to the left and going to the right is not a good thing. Absolutely not. You know, it's, it's staying on the path. Like you said, the enemy wants us to be off course. Of course, yeah, that's right. He wants us to just, instead of walking that straight and narrow path, he wants us to just stray away from it and, and it keeps us from walking with God. You know, because he was thinking that going going to the other way was an easy way to get rid of his burden, you know, because that's what he was trying to do. And worldly was saying, no, you go this way, your burden will be lifted easily and quickly. And, you know, but he realized it just made it worse. You know, he probably got an extra burden because of that. But we know that, you know, holding steadfast to God is not a good thing. It's not an automatic thing sometimes because when, when trials and tribulations and persecution comes, the last thing we think about is holding the fast to the Lord and giving it to him. Because we're thinking about how can we fix this problem and how can we make this stuff and this pain go away? So we try to do it on our own, no matter how that looks or what happens, you know, pills or drugs or just acting, acting, you know, or doing our own actions. We know that, you know, so we can understand that it's not easy to stay fast in the Lord. And it's not meant to be easy. You know, God tests us all the time. The Bible tells us that we will be tested. You know. Amen. The world provides a quick fix, but it's just temporary. That's you're still going to feel that pain and whatever you're struggling with. Um, the only real way to go is just to hold fast to the Lord. Amen. Yeah, it's, it's not a fix at all. It's just a temporary relief of your pain and burden. It's not a solution. We know that God provides the solution for our lives. At the end of this journey, we'll just be blessed hundredfold. 100,000 folds, 10,000 folds, because the word tells us that. You know, I used to tell people all the time, you know, Satan never tells us the consequences of following him. He just says, okay, this is good. This is going to happen. You're going to go and do it, and it's all going to be good. But, and people do, you know, and then when the consequences come and it's, and it's more and it's worse than the burdens they were having all along, then they don't realize that, well, maybe I shouldn't have listened to Satan all along because, you know, he led me down this wrong path that's made things worse instead of making things better. Well, and the solution was temporary and not permanent. You know, but praise the Lord, we can always go back to the Lord. Amen. 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 God will always welcome us back. Yes, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through him. And 
and he already bore all of our sins on the cross. You know, who is he who condemns? The enemy, the devil wants to keep condemning us, you know, saying that you've done this wrong or you're not good enough or whatever. Um, but because Jesus shed his blood for you and for all of us, we are good enough because Amen. our righteousness is in him. It's not in our own selves. We are all just filthy rags apart from Christ. There is no one good except God alone. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any comments? Yeah, I just want to agree with you, Pastor Nike. Uh, you know, we when I first started meeting with your dad, um, he used to tell me the same thing. He used to tell me that our righteousness is as filthy rags in God's eyes and um and uh, really, truly, lately, I've seen, I've been seeing in my own life, I really have nothing to offer, for, and it's only by, you know, God's grace every day that that I'm able to make it. Amen. And um, and so, uh, you know, and I, I do struggle with some things, you know, with, uh, you know, wanting to, you know, take actions into my own hands, and you know, my drinking and everything. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I just really hope that God can take all that away someday, but for right now, it's what I do, you know, and I, you know, I hope that God will take it. I don't know when he's going to take it away from me, but hopefully someday he will. Amen. Amen. Well, he will take it away someday because that's what you want, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. And it's in his timing. And it's in his timing. Absolutely. Amen. So it's coming. Yes. Oh, and I just wanted to say I'm grateful that it's not based on my performance because, because you know, all the drinking and everything, you know, the law and everything condemns all that. But, you know, it's a good thing that Jesus came because he He paid the price for, for everything I've ever done or will. It's really great. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Any other comments? Oh yes, I have have oh, something. Just no, I took it off. I I uh, just have a response to Brother Daniel's comments. Is that from from what I hear, understand about you and and the times that you confessed, Brother Daniel, and knowing that Jesus can fix all these things when. When, the, when God looks down upon you, I think you'll see the blood of Christ because that's what you express to us, that you you have that faith in Christ and, and God knows it. And so praise the Lord for that. And I just want to give you that. I hope that's encouragement for you because Amen. Christ sees you. I mean, God sees you and he sees Christ. Amen. Amen. Absolutely, Pastor Rufus. Thank you so much for that, brother. I appreciate that. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. In Proverbs 8, verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. In Psalm 119, 113, and 117, I hate the double-minded or divided in heart or mind, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Uh, uphold me according to your word that I may live. And do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Uphold me uh, or hold me up and I shall be safe. And I shall observe your statutes continually. Amen. Amen. Lord. Praise the Lord. This confirmation. He will behold us, take care of us. Amen. Any comments? Yes, it reminds me also of the verse that says, Blessed are those who put their trust in the Lord. Um, but cursed is the man who puts their trust in man, man or man. confidence in man. man. Amen. Um, but praise God that 
when we put our trust in him, he is going to uphold us. He's going to give us the strength and the faith that we need. Amen. I mean, we, we realize that we live in a evil and perverse generation, that's for sure. Evil is everywhere. And there's nothing more stronger than Satan trying to take us away from God. You know, that's why we go through the things we go through, because it's all designed to keep us and take us away from serving our God. But we have to, now that we recognize that, that, you know, you know, I think one of the verses was saying, stay away from evil and, and you know, we don't want to toy with evil. We don't want to toy with Satan. We don't want to mess around with it. So the word says, stay away from those that are evil. Stay away from those that, you know, because Satan can use those people to keep you away from God, and he will. You know, I, I, I've experienced that where I've been around a lot of evil people who would love more than to, you know, take me out. And so it was all designed to take me out. But we go back to holding fast to God. Amen. Amen. We learn to just hold fast in him and know that if we just continue to do what the Lord wants us to do, we're going to be fine. Just like COVID. No COVID will come near us because God's not going to allow it to. You know, we are his. We are his chosen people. We observe his statutes. We command, obey his laws. We do the best we can in our life. And that's all God requires. Will we make mistakes? Of course. People in the Bible made mistakes. It's okay. Making a mistake is okay because none of us are perfect and we all fall short of the glory of the Lord. We all fall short. But we know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, as Pastor Knight said earlier. And long as we continue to follow those things, we're going to be fine. Amen. Amen. I think I have a question. Step. Oh, go ahead, Brother Daniel. I have a question. So I have some friends that I hang out with, mm -hmm. but I feel like God is like calling me not to hang out with them anymore. But I'm, I'm kind of worried that I'll lose them as friends and everything. And I don't know how to tell them that I can't hang out with them. And the reason why... I don't think I'm supposed to hang out with them is because they smoke weed. And when I get around them, it's like everything that, you know, everything that I'm trying to do, it like goes out the window. Like they might have like a vape or whatever. And I haven't been vaping, but I'll already start vaping as soon as they, I start hanging out with them. And then they, they smoke weed and whatever, but I, I, I don't, but I want to do, you know, I want to when I'm around them, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I don't know if there's a good way that I can just, should I just not tell them and not talk to them anymore? Or what should I do? Wow, uh, that's amazing, Brother Daniel, because the <laughs> verse that I was just going to say, um, you know, the verse that Pastor Tyrone was referencing to is in First Corinthians 15, verse 33, where it says, do not be deceived, evil company corrupts good habits Amen. and so yeah the people that we surround ourselves with it's ultimately um i know jesus also you know came to the tax collectors and sinners um but he was ready because he knew that um you know he said i did not come to the righteous but to to those who are sick and um you know, to the sinners for repentance. Um, but then Jesus was already strong in his walk. But for us, you know, I know dad had uh, shared this example of, you know, this guy going to the bar and, and he said, oh, I'm going to min minister to the people in this bar. Um, <laughs> but then he ended up drinking himself. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think for sure, it's all about being led. Um, and, but I don't know, Pastor Tyrone, what, he, what should he say? Well, I think that, um, well, definitely being around him is not a good thing. And so that, um, I mean, I, I guess you could just gratefully not, not join them when they go and do these things, you know, um, 
you should pray about it, I suppose. Yeah. Well, there, it's, just kind of, it's just kind of difficult because they're, they're my friends and they're veterans. And uh, it's just, it's just difficult, you know? Yeah. You have um, a bond of that. It's very difficult to, you know, just like, to just like let go, you know? But I do definitely feel like the Lord is leading me not to hang out with them. You know? Well, uh, the Lord is definitely doing that. If you yeah, feel the so Lord is telling you not to do it, then Pastor Rufus, do you have any any thoughts on that? I, I do. I do have some thoughts, and uh, Brother Daniel, I I I believe that if if you're true to yourself, just be true to your faith, and let them know what your faith is, and They'll scatter. <laughs> that's so true. I think that's, that's very true. Yeah, I yeah. agree, Pastor Rufus. <laughs> that is excellent, Pastor Rufus, because yeah. that is, I was just thinking the same thing. When I told people that I was a church Christian and I was a pastor, they fled. I didn't have to worry about them anymore. So yeah. that's a good, excellent point, you know. Yeah. Uh, you I did. I did. Them, Daniel, they'll flee. Trust me, okay? You know? <laughs> I did let them know about my faith, and in fact, one of them I invite to church. So I probably won't sever ties with him completely because I wanted to keep him coming to church, whether or not I hang out with them on my own. It's the guy Jason I've been talking about on the call, but definitely like the other guy. I've asked him if he wants to come to church, and he says he's not for sure. And it's just so difficult because you know, like. I, I know he has a heart. Like, I know that God could get a hold of this guy's heart, but I can't be around him because it's dangerous for me because I could fall back into, like, some more serious addictions than just alcohol. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. right. That's, that's right. Because you Not have that to... alcohol isn't a serious addiction, but there's much – I feel like there's much worse things I could fall back into. Yeah. This is we we would earlier we were talking about God's got to do it and 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 so give give the Lord a chance and and allow allow the Lord to fight your battles Amen. but but so and, and that's what I mean by just uh, allow allow your your faith to speak for you just be who you are and as 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 best you can even when you are around them. But don't hide the fact of who you are or, or who you're trying to be, even if that's not happening right now, because God don't always do it magically. You know, it, it, it's in his timing. He knows when to move in and move them out. And so all I'm saying is continue to give yourself that chance and, and con confess your faith. No matter what the situation around is, confess your faith. Now I, I have a similar. I don't. It, it's not the same problem. Uh, like the the, the man I, I work for, David. Now he's not. He he's not influencing me in any bad way. Or anything. He's actually a nice guy. But he and I actually invited him to listen to uh, the the Sabbath message. I sent him a link for that. I don't know if he ever did, but. He and his wife, I, I uh, are not his wife. Uh, father was a, a minister, and and he turned her away from somehow she didn't did his behavior. I don't Joanna knows more of the details than yeah. than he, I do. He was a very legalistic minister, and he turned her off from anything he represented by his behavior. So she doesn't want to have a whole lot to do with Christianity because of the um, the really um, what's the word the negative impact her father had upon her. Mm -hmm. but it's like we, going to the Hill of Legality in the movie. Yeah. That's what my father yeah. was like. Yeah, but with the way the way I treat the two of them is that if 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 whenever there's a, a I see a crack in the door or something. I'll make a little comment. I'll just keep keep letting them know where I, where I am and where I stand. And it's then it's up to God. And it's and it's you know and that's all I can do because they're not a you know they're not again that's that's a little different from your situation because they're not someone that's trying to in, influence me uh, you know with bad things and so that's a little bit different. 
But again, I think it's the same in, in approach to just allow God to speak for you. Just, you know, when you get a chance, put in a few words, uh, you know, uh, that that manifests your faith in the Lord. Amen. That's what I would still say, hold to. Hey, Amen, thank you. Thank you so much. Pastor Steve, you had a comment? Yeah, sorry, I just joined, so I, I may be uh, out of context here. I joined when Brother Daniel was talking about, um, um, you know, possibly being influenced by people, but he wants to see them saved. And that's a very common um, occurrence with us. And uh, my, my, my input there would be uh, that we, we it, if it's not spirit led, it's dangerous. There's an old saying, many people use it, that if you, someone wants to go into a bar and uh, save people, if God's not behind it, they'll end up a drunk, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, it's prayer through all of this is extremely important. Uh, if God is behind it, and actually brother Daniel, uh, uh, can relate to what I'm talking about when, uh, maybe a decade ago when we first met, if God was behind it, it didn't matter who was around, whether there were, whether there was chance of, you know, people shooting us or whatever. If God was behind it, you're safe and there's no chance of being, um, influenced by the surroundings yet you are going to be used to influence them but it really has to be god so prayer is absolutely necessary and faith that even though if 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 it doesn't seem that god is moving in the situation pray for those people and and follow what god wants us to do and trust that he loves them and he hears our prayers and he'll do it some way in his timing but uh, really important not to try to force the situation on our own strength or um, it'll just be our works and it won't have the power. Um, so, uh, yeah, and, and Pastor Rufus is correct, you know, by sharing our faith. Generally, that has a lot to do with uh, causing people to go. If they're not, God's not calling them yet, they'll generally go the other direction. But it's very important to be in prayer and to understand that we do have weaknesses and if God's not moving us to do this, then we should go ahead and follow whatever God wants for us instead. And another comment on Pastor Rufus's situation, when you run into a person who's been negatively influenced by the church, it's not going to be giving them more um, sermons that's going to change them. It's going to be our behavior that will cause them to see something different than what they've already done. When they see unconditional love and patience and all the fruit of the spirit, it will get their attention. They'll see something different and they'll become curious and God will call them that way. And then they can hear the two truth between law and grace and God can bring them in. Amen. 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 Well, I hope that answers your question, uh, Brother Rufus. I mean, Brother Daniel. <laughs> no, that you got was, a lot of that good advice, really, that's for sure. No, that was really good. It's been something that's been on my heart for a while, and it's just killing me inside because you know, I love I love these people, but I I've seen some things happening the last couple of times I've hung out with them, and I just I'm on shaky ground when I'm with them. Yeah. Well, you definitely can't be around it if you're gonna be on shaky ground. Because that, that's, you know, opening the door for you to, to join them. Jesus' family said, you know, go and do this and do that. And Jesus says, your time is any time. My time has not yet come. He understood that unless God is behind it, it's not going to bear fruit. And so, Brother Daniel, you know, you he, God knows your heart and he hears your prayers. But it just may not be time for you to go and uh, do those things with them because he's still working in you. Amen. Thank you, pastors. Amen. Any other comments? Okay. Verse five, it says, whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I will destroy. The one who has a haughty look and a proud heart, him I will not endure. Amen. Amen. In Proverbs 6, verses 16 to 19, these six things the Lord hates, 
Yes, seven are an abomination to him or to his soul. A proud look or haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift and running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Amen. 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 Okay, now we know what the Lord hates, right? Yeah. <laughs> Any comments? Okay, let's go to verses six to eight. It says, my eyes shall not, my eyes, my eyes shall be on the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He who was in a blameless or perfect way, he shall serve me. He who works, he who works deceit shall not dwell within my house. He who tells lies shall not be or establish or be established continue in my presence. Early I will destroy all the wicked of the land, that they may cut off all the evildoers from the city of the Lord. Amen. Amen. In Psalm 119 verse 1, Blessed are the undefiled or blameless in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Amen. 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 In Micah 2, verses 8 to 10, Lately my people have risen up as an enemy. You pull off the robe with the garments from those who trust you as they pass by, like men returned from war. The women of my people you cast out from their pleasant houses, from their children, you have taken away my glory forever. Arise and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is defiled, it shall destroy, yes, with utter destruction. Amen. Amen. Powerful words. So we know that, you know, the wicked will get what's coming to them. Absolutely. You know, but we all pray for them to just come into the, the light of the Lord, though. You know, that's why God is always saying, you know, he loves the just and the unjust. You know, those that follow him and those that don't, he loves them just as much. But we want everyone to come to Christ, but he wants us all to. So they have to go through the things they have to go through. I mean, whether it's deceitful or dishonest or whatever it is in life, you know, it's going to happen, and they're going to go through it. But they get their reward. They get punished. They get their, you know, the consequences of their actions will definitely be dealt with by the Lord. But know that, you know, even if some of these things are brought on to us, you know, we still have the Lord. Amen. Amen. We just hold steadfast to him. And that, you know, that he's going to handle everything. This is why prayer is so, so, so very important. This is why talking about it to brothers and sisters is so very important. Because these are burdens that can weigh heavily upon us all. Amen. Amen. You know, but we, we, we can't be ashamed. You know, that's the main thing about why do we confess or why do we don't confess? It's because we're ashamed. You know, David was never ashamed. All the things he did that were not pleasing to the side of the Lord, he confessed it to the Lord. He didn't do it to man. He did it to the Lord. We do it to the Lord. We lift it up to him. And God comforted him every time. You know, God will, wants to comfort us, you know. There's nothing so bad that we can't, you know, confess to the Lord. We might think it's bad, you know, but these are things that have to be get, be taken out of our heart. As bad and as painful and as disgusting as we may think it is, you know, to the Lord it's not. You know, I've, I've been on the prayer call for 
maybe a couple of years now, three or four years. I don't know how long it's been so long. And I'll tell you, I've heard some things that people confess that would make your toes curl, okay? And your hair straight stand up. But it was important for them to confess those things, amen, and get prayer for it because they weren't set free until that happened. We are the same. We should never be ashamed to, to wanting to be set free of something that's in our hearts that God wants us to get out. Because if we don't, it can destroy us as well. Amen. 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 So praise the Lord. We have him. Praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Any other comments? In Isaiah 1 verse 18, it says, Though your, your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So just praise God that he, he's already just took it all up on the cross. Amen. And, yeah. and he already knows. Yeah. He already yeah. knows. He knows the stuff we've done since we were babies and were born. He knows. Yeah. But it doesn't give us an excuse to keep sinning. <laughs> we shouldn't take grace for granted and and do what we want. Um, but absolutely, just what a what a privilege and honor and, and just a blessing it is that He already took it all on the cross. You know, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, I I have a comment. Um, when Jesus took upon Himself that cross, that he he showed us so clearly that he has a heart of grace for sinners. Um, he loves the sinner and hates the sin. But he did that what he did for sinners. And all of us are sinners. And as we read this psalm, we see that David was just so wanting to to be with the lord he wanted the lord to just come and be with him that's that's what his utmost desire was and we can't serve the world and serve god at the same time mm -hmm. we're in the world you know we have to be in the world because we're all still alive in this world but we want god to take out of us the love of the world and, you know, sometimes, I'll be honest with you, um, I get into my old car, <laughs> my old car that still needs to be washed um, <laughs> from all the ash and soot, and it's got some dents in it, it's seven years old. And I think, wow, it would be so nice to have a nice new car, you know, a white car like everyone else has, you know. <laughs> but um, I don't. And, and I, I'm, I've got my little 2013 focus and, um, I praise God that he, that he, that fleeting desire is just that it's fleeting. <laughs> it doesn't consume me. And whereas people that live in the world, um, they get consumed by the desire for newer, better bigger, you know, things um, that are things of the world. Um, so I just praise God that, yes, the, the fleeting desire, it kind of washes over me like the waves, and, and then it's gone, you know, and then I'm just grateful I have a car that can get me from point A to point B, you know, and, and um, but that just kind of, that's a simple example of how God causes me to understand that I can't serve the world and serve him at the same time. So I, I, it's, I just felt that in my heart to share. Thanks. I, I want to just have one little comment on this. And God put her with a man who's totally <laughs> happy with his 20 year old truck. <laughs> Still gets, gets down the road from here to Vallejo up in Vacaville, and which are the places that I normally go. And, and so far it's gotten me anywhere else I wanted to go. It's moved me between three states. Uh, 
you know, from since I've had it, and and uh, so I'm totally happy with that. And that's, <laughs> that's how God works yes. in our hearts and in our lives, and yes, He's, he's he kept does. that old truck going. <laughs> I mean, I have to talk him into buying new socks. <laughs> <laughs> And, but that's Rufus is they, one very lovable they, gentleman, and if he wants to wear old beat up socks, <laughs> that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> they don't have holes in them. No, they don't have holes in them, but the elastic's all stretched out. <laughs> <laughs> and no one knows it but her. <laughs> well, now we all know. Yeah. Oh, no one yeah. knew it. Transparency. Well, you guys are family. So that's okay, too. Yeah, yeah. He could tell some things about me. Rufus. I got under. I... <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Daniel. <laughs> We're listening. <laughs> Maybe that was. Uh, I said it's all good. I got clothes that are like four or five years old. It's all good. There's <laughs> Four or five, wow. That's brand new. That's brand new to yeah. Rufus. Yeah, he cool. pulls out t-shirts that he's had for 20 years. And um, and he tries to sew up the little tiny holes that come into cotton sometimes. But Daniel, you're doing good, though. <laughs> oh, I know. That's, that's, it's that's so... what I'm saying. <laughs> I struggle Amen. with everything that you're talking about right now. Because I want new rims for my car. And I want a muffler for my car and I want all these other things because I see my other friends get them, you know, and I'm like, man, I want some new rims for my car, man. I want a new muffler for my car, but I mean, really, I should just be happy with what God gives me. But I, 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 I don't know. I guess I'm a little worldly. Well, you know, Daniel, brother Daniel, I think we all are, we are all still living in the world and there's are things in our hearts that we hold as idols. I mean, our hearts are idolatrous, I guess you could say. And but it's only God, as He works in us and through us, that that we will that we will He will cause us to let go of those things. And and He will bless us the way He sees fit to bless us. You know, I have to say this um, prior to April, when Rufus and I, you know got married and he moved in i was living paycheck to paycheck you know my my little retirement my social security and my trader joe's and um you know i didn't expect that after i retired from united airlines that i would have to work i mean for pete's sakes i worked for all those years however god made a way that now I am not only able to put some money in a savings account to prepare for my next tax bill, which I know I will have since I've had a tax bill since I retired. Um, he's provided, I'm, I'm not living paycheck to paycheck anymore. And, and it's because God has provided the means for that, the means for me to prepare for paying those taxes and then if he somehow takes that need away then you know it, it, he's he's just made a way that seemed hopeless to me um if you remember some of the things i asked for prayer about a year two years ago i was i felt like i was on a treadmill i was working myself crazy without seeing any relief and um god in god's way he he changed my situation and rufus's as well i mean we're we are now sharing a life together rather than just sharing a little small part of our life we're sharing a life and all that that entails and god is the one that that made that happen um God, only God could have could have done this um, because I know myself and I know Rufus and I know where we had issues that simply seemed like it was just, you know, that maybe some of those issues could be deal breakers in us truly being a family. Um, but God, 
caused it all to occur. And he's given Rufus and I an ability, and it's from God, it's not from us, mm. to kind of sort through the, the things that maybe we are different about. And he's doing work in us. There is no doubt about mm. it. And he's doing it in you too, Daniel. He's doing it in you. Mm. And you just completely trust in him as you walk out the door. Just say, I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Make your trust in him just without any boundaries and trust him. Walk in this, be enveloped in, in the trust that you have for him. Amen. Uh, one more thing, and it's not that we weren't trying, believe me, for those, uh, what, eight years we've been together. We, we were trying, but uh, it just wasn't happening until God just said, well, now I'll try. Now I'll do it. Not try, but do it. And he did it. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Joanna. <laughs> Praise the Lord, Brother Daniel. I'll keep you in my prayers all day as I go to work. <laughs> hey, you're excellent. Thank you so much, sister. Okay, any other comments? Is this the end of the study? Sorry, I just got a question. <laughs> oh, we have one more verse. Oh, praise God. <laughs> in Micah 6, verse 8 says, he has shown you, O oh man, what is, good. what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justly, to love mercy, or loving kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Amen. 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 My favorite, one of my most favorite verses. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Okay, brother, then you had a question. Amen. Sorry, this isn't related to the Bible study, but I wanted to wait till it was done. It's been kind of floating around in the back of my mind. But if my car needs an oil change,